Welcome to my KTM video playlist. Today we are going to see very important theoretical portion that is the tension ratio for the flat belt drive. Here you can see this is the driver which is rotating in the clockwise direction so that it will pull from this direction and thus it will be the right side and this one is the slack side. Consider a driven pulley rotating in the clockwise direction as shown in this figure. So I am going to draw over here this driven pulley by approximately 2x zoom. So that exactly we can analyze over here. So this is the driven pulley which rotates in the clockwise direction. So here this is the clockwise direction. Here you can see this is the tight side tension. So let's say T1 is the tension in the belt on the tight side. So it will be over here. T1 is the tension on the tight side. And T2 will be the tension in the belt on the slack side. So here it will be T2. So T2 will be the slack side tension and T1 will be the tight side tension. Keep in mind T1 is always greater than T2. And so that you can see this is the contact angle. So I can draw over here. So from A to B that will be the contact angle on the driven pulley or the belt and pulley surface. So here you can say this is the theta is considered as the contact angle or sometimes it is called as the lip angle. So here theta will be the angle of contact in radian and you know that theta will be multiplied by pi by 180 so that you can convert it in degree to radian. Now consider very small portion of this AB arc that is say for example PQ. So here this is the very small portion of this theta angle that's why it is delta theta. Keep in mind this delta theta is having very small value of theta for the analysis purpose. So consider a small portion of the belt PQ. I am going to consider from here to here. Substanding an angle delta theta at the center of the pulley. So I am talking about this length PQ for the analysis purpose. So keep in mind, I am going to consider this very small portion PQ having subtended angle delta theta at the center of pulley. The belt PQ is in equilibrium condition under the following forces. First, tension T in the belt at P. So here you can see this is the length of the belt. So at P there is a tension and here you can see this tension will be T. Next, tension T plus delta T in the belt at Q. Because of you know that at this side there will be the tight side tension. So always the tension will be more than this side. So here it will be T plus delta T. So delta T is again a very small value of T. So here you can understand this side the tension will be more and that's why it is T plus delta T. Normal reaction Rn. So here normal reaction that is actually perpendicular to this surface. So that is in this direction Rn. Next force that is the frictional force. And you know that frictional force that is always opposite to the direction of the rotating pulley. So it is rotating in this anticlockwise direction. So your frictional force will be opposite to this one. That's why it is on the upper direction. And that is again perpendicular to this normal reaction always. So it will be the friction force and that is equal to mu into Rn. So in short, you can say for equilibrium condition of PQ, you have to consider these all four forces. Now to resolve the forces, 
first you have to resolve all forces in the horizontal direction and then vertical direction so let's start from the first horizontal direction so here i am going to take the component of this t plus delta t because of that is actually in inclined direction that means it is not in horizontal or not in vertical position so you can take the two components one is in vertical direction and another one is in horizontal direction now again you know that this is delta theta so it will be delta theta by 2 and this will be also delta theta by 2 and thus it will be also delta theta by 2 again you know that this vertical component makes the angle that's why this vertical component will be the cos component of this t plus delta t and so that it will be the sine component so very simple this is the cos component of this t plus delta t so you can understand t plus delta t into cos component angle is delta theta by 2 if this is the cos component so obviously the remaining component should be the sine component similarly on this side there is a two component of this t here again you can understand this is the delta theta by 2 and so that it will be the cos component of t and this will be the sine component of t now you can equate all the horizontal forces so here Rn that is the positive x direction now equate with the negative x direction so here it is t plus delta t into sine delta theta by 2 plus e sine delta theta by 2 so here in the horizontal direction only these three forces this Rn that is in the positive x direction is equal to these two component that will be in the negative x direction let's say it is equation number one here this angle delta theta that is actually very small value and if you divide by two then again it is very small value so you can consider this delta theta by two that is equal to zero and you know that sine zero is equal to zero so similarly you can say if this angle is very small then you can say sine delta theta by 2 is equal to delta theta by 2. So put this value in this equation. So t plus delta t as it is and this is delta theta by 2. Again over here you can say it is delta theta by 2. Now again simplification of these two. So this bracket will be multiplied with this. So it will be t into delta theta by 2 plus delta t into delta theta by 2 and this term as it is. Now here neglecting delta t into delta theta by 2 because of delta t is very small value of t and here delta theta is once again very small value of theta. So very small value multiplied by very small value that is very very small value. So ignore this term so that the remaining term will be r as it is and t into delta theta by 2 plus t into delta theta by 2 so you can say two times t into delta theta by 2 and 2 2 will be cancelled so it will be t into delta theta let's say it is equation number 2 now it's done for the resolve all the forces in vertical direction. So here you can consider this is in vertical direction. So it will be mu Rn plus this is also in vertical direction. So it will be plus T cos delta theta by 2 is equal to here this is in vertical direction. So it will be T plus delta T into cos delta theta by 2. So here in vertical direction only three forces, one, two and three. These two forces are in upper direction. So it will be on the left side and this will be in the downward direction. So it will be in the right side. Let's say it is equation number three. Now here delta theta is again very small. 
So delta theta by 2 is again very small. That is nearly equal to 0 and you know that cos 0 is equal to 1. So here I can say cos delta theta by 2 is nearly equal to 1 because of this is very small value. So you can say cos 0 is equal to 1. So put this value over here. So mu r n as it is plus t into cos delta theta by 2 is equal to 1. So it is only plus t. Here t plus delta t as it is and that is equal to 1. Now here t t will be cancelled. So the remaining term will be mu r n is equal to delta t. Again simplification. So r n is equal to delta t by mu. Let's say it is equation number 4. Now equating the value of r n from equation number 2 and 4. And here you can see this is equation number 2 and this is equation number 4. So you can compare these two values of Rn. So I can say delta t by mu is equal to t delta theta. Further simplification. So delta t by t is equal to mu into delta theta. Let's say it is equation number 5. Now integrating on both sides. And when you integrate, you have to put the limits. Here this integration with respect to t, so you have to put the limit of t over here. Here this is integration with respect to theta, so you have to put the limit for theta on this side. Here the limit for the tension is t1 and t2. So the maximum value is t1 and minimum value is t2. So the limit will be from lower to upper, so it is t2 and t1. Similarly the angle theta. If you consider the A point over here, then there will be zero contact. So the minimum angle will be zero and maximum angle will be theta. So you can say minimum to maximum limit is zero to theta. And for the tension, minimum to maximum will be T2 and T1. So I can integrate over here this equation from both side and put the limit T2 to T1 and over here it is zero to theta. Now you know that the integration of 1 upon t with respect to t is log t, limit as it is and here mu is constant. So you can take it outside and in bracket there is 1 only and the integration of 1 with respect to theta is theta. Put the limit as it is. So keep in mind over here mu is a constant so it will be outside. And here there is remaining term as 1 and integration of 1 is theta. Now you can put the limit. So now I am going to put the limit. So first you have to put the upper limit. So it will be log t1 minus lower limit. So it will be log t2 is equal to mu as it is plus upper limit. So it will be theta minus lower limit. So it will be 0. Now you know that log t1 minus log t2 that is log t1 upon t2 and here theta minus 0 will be theta so mu into theta that is the remaining term. Now again you know that this is the logarithmic term. So if you want to write in exponential term so that will be e raised to mu theta that is equal to t1 upon t2. Let's say it is equation number 5. And this equation that is known as the tension ratio or the flat belt drive. So the above expression that gives the relation between the tight side tension and slack side tension in terms of coefficient of friction mu and the angle of contact theta. The above expression is also known as tension ratio or ratio of driving tension or limiting tension ratio for the flat belt drive. So this is the final derivation of the tension ratio for the flat belt drive. If you have any doubt then you can write in the comment box. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video. Press the like button to appreciate it.